So when we do some forecast, it is very important to check how our forecast performs, you know. So the performance of the forecast depends on accuracy. And how do we measure accuracy of our forecast? There are many accuracy measures out there, but here I'm going to discuss about a few of the most common and widely used ones. So the first one here that I'll be mentioning is the MSE, mean squared error. So here, if you look closely here, what we are doing is, so we are saying that Y is our forecasted value at time T and a T is our actual value at time T. So what we do is we take the difference between actual and forecast and we square it. And then we just take the average of all of these squared errors. Okay, so this part, when we take the difference, this is the error, okay? And then what we're doing, we're just squaring the error and then taking the mean of it. So that's why we're calling it mean squared error. The next one is root mean squared error. So it is simply taking the root of mean squared error. Actually, you will see that the RMSC is kind of one of the really most widely used one, okay? But I, I actually don't prefer RMSE, I prefer MAP, but we are getting there. So the next one is MAD, mean absolute deviation. So what we are doing here is we are just taking the difference between the two uh, actual and forecasted value. So, and then taking the absolute of that with this symbol here. So we are taking the absolute, we are just canceling out the plus minuses. Here we were doing the same, but we are using the square to cancel out the negative values. But here we are just taking the absolute value to cancel out the negative. So we only take positive values and we just take the average of that. We sum it up and take the average, okay? That's what is the mean absolute deviation. So this is the deviation part, the error. This is the deviation part and, and just taking and the absolute of that and then taking the mean, okay? And the next one is my most favorite. That is MAPE, mean absolute percentage error, okay? So here what we're doing is uh, we are first taking the error and we are taking the absolute of the error as in previous case, as you can see here, in the previous case we did more or less the same. So we first take the error, the difference between actual and forecasted and we take the absolute of that, okay? And then we divide each of the values with the actual value to see the rate of the error. So how much is our rate in percentage comparison to our actual value? Okay, so that's what we're doing and then we are just multiplying it with 100 and then we are taking average of the whole part, okay? So we will see this in Excel how to do and that's actually my most favorite one, the MAPE. Uh, normally if you can do a forecast with uh, less than 10 or 15% MAPE, that's a pretty good forecast and very good forecast will have maybe less than like 5% MAPE, okay? And there is one more which I'm not discussing here, but maybe I'll discuss in later videos, which is called MASE, Mean Absolute Scale Error, okay? So some research has shown that all these forecast measures, they could be biased based on the number of sample periods that we are using to calculate them. So let's say, I, let's say for instance, if I use 20 sample period to calculate all these ones, and we see that RMAC, based on RMAC, one model is working better. And then suddenly we increase the sample period to 30 and we see that suddenly based on MAPE, another model is working better, you know? So they could give contrasting results. So that's why some researchers proposed a, another accuracy measure called MAC, which always compares with the naive forecast, okay? If the forecast is better than the naive forecast, it's better, okay? So that's how they kind of scale the error in comparison to the naive forecast. But I will talk about it in later videos. We skip it for now. So from the next videos, I will be showing you some of the forecast models and I will show you how to calculate them in Excel. And I'll be starting with the naive forecast. Mm -hmm.